Hello, uh, welcome. In today's video, I am analyzing Chula Mandalam Investment and Finance Company. After looking at core ratios, I'll go into detailed peer group comparison where we'll analyze multiple ratios to understand uh, whether we can go in for this company or its peer group companies. The company is engaged in the business of financial services and lending. So basically, it comes into the category of finance or in an NBFC. Market cap stands at around 27,782 crores. The current price is 339 rupees, which is very near to its 52 weeks highest point. So it is touching almost its highest it had reached in last one year. The lowest it had reached was 117. The stock's current price earning or latest price earning is 21 rupees, 21 times. That is, price is 21 times higher than the profit earned per share. If you don't understand any of these ratios, you can look at my detailed video, which I have released earlier, a uh, few months back. So you can go in those videos and check out what each ratio means. I have explained in detail uh, for each ratio. Those are around one and a half hour videos, which are longer uh, videos. Book value is 110 and the current price is 339 rupees. So basically price to book is somewhere around three times, slightly above three times. Little expensive. Dividend yield is less than uh, or almost half a percent. Return on capital employed 10% and return on equity 14.6%. Generally, NBFCs would have low ROE, ROCE because they work with uh, high leverage and therefore their uh, return on capital employed and ROE as well is generally low. Face value is 2. Book value 3 years back was 65 and currently it is at 110 rupees. So it has managed to increase its book value. Market cap 3 years back was 15,000 and five years back was 8000 so you can see how overall there has been growth in the or how the market investors have given it valuations higher and higher over the years so five years back it was 8400 now three years back 15000 and now 27000 so it has been growing its market cap and at the same time growing in terms of price as well so it shows a good trend of uh, up, upward market cap the number of equity shares outstanding in the market or available in the market or floating in the market is around 82 crores. OPM since last three years is 73%. Generally, most of uh, the OPMs of NBFCs of financial companies are high because here the expenses are very low, operating expenses, but interest cost is very high. So after deducting the interest cost depreciation taxes we have to look at the npm margin what is the final npm margin so for nbfc's opm actually doesn't matter that much because it will always be very high written over one year last one year it has generated around 7.83 percent from three years back it has given only 10.1 percent compounded every year and over five years back if somebody had held on to this share five years back it has generated around 21% of returns since last five years compounded. Debt is around 60,000 crores on its book, whereas market cap is around 27,000. So basically it has a huge debt compared to its market cap, almost double uh, the market cap. Debt in the preceding year, this is the latest debt. And in the preceding year, that would be 2020, it was around 50,567 crores. So it has increased by around 10,000 crores additionally. And from three years back, it has increased by from 24,000 to 60,000 crores. So company's debts has been increasing over the years. As the company grows, it has to provide more and more finance. And therefore, it has to borrow more and more as there is demand for its debt or for people are borrowing from it. So it needs to also borrow. Interest cost is around 4,643 crores. This is the latest interest it paid on total debt of 60,000 crores. So it is very nominal uh, compared to the debt it has taken. So that would be not even 10% of uh, interest cost for a debt of around 60,578 crores. 
Investments are 35 crores, very less. That's okay. Cash equivalent, it is still holding around 6,852 crores of cash in its balance sheet, which is uh, which seems like a big portion of their total debt, which is almost 10% of their debt. Trade receivables will ignore this. Payables also will ignore. It's not a very huge portion. Generally, NBFCs don't have payables and receivables that much or that substantial. Working capital is positive. That is, they have more assets than the liabilities of the for the current year, or current assets are more than the current liabilities. Assets current on the book is around 263 crores, a very small portion. Three years back, it was 150 crores. So, NBFCs or financial institutions don't require that much assets. So, we can ignore this as well. Balance sheet size is 70,621 crores, whereas market cap is 27,000 crores. So we are getting it below its balance sheet size or total asset size of 70,000 crores. So this way also we can value it when we compare it with its peer group companies or individually as well. Debt is around 57 times more than its profits. This is so what it this basically signifies is that the debt is very high compared to the profit it is earning. So if it has to pay this debt using its profits of the latest year then it will require 57 years to pay off this debt which is substantially very high but we see even at this debt it is uh, its interest cost is not that substantial but we will have to also compare this interest against the operating profit that it is generating to understand how much is the interest coverage which we will look on uh, when we compare it with the peer group companies market cap is three times more than the revenue it's generating so this is not that high substantially so valuation wise this is okay but this seems little high on the 57 times profit after tax of the last five years in total is just 4461 crores which is quite less uh, we'll see how it works out in the in the ratios Cash flows are negative 23,000 crores. This is understandable because or most finance companies would have a negative cash flow from operations because the cash has to go out in their normal day to day business activity because that is what they are into. This is the business. They are into the business of lending money. And they have around 23,941 of free cash flows. So this is not that much, uh, won't make that much sense until we look at the cash flow statement as such. Moving on, let us look at how price has changed over last three years. Currently, it is quoting at around 338 rupees as of 20th November 2020. And it has also moved above its 200 days daily moving average line. So the black line indicates the 200 day DMA or daily moving average and this is a bullish sign whenever it crosses above its 200 day moving average and whenever it crosses below its 200 day moving average below then it's a bearish sign so basically i would want to buy as it falls below 200 if the company is good and start selling as it goes up but generally many people do the reverse they would want to buy as it crosses above 200 and sell as it crosses below 200 but I generally do reverse if the company is good that is I would get to buy this company at a cheaper price and I also take less risk when I'm buying low provided the company's valuations are good company's profitability metrics are good and other metrics are all good and that is I want to buy into this company after doing a thorough research so at, as far as the price is concerned it has moved up and now it is almost nearing where it was in fab 2020 and even if you go all the way back till april also it is nearing its like april uh, high point 2018's high point of 347 rupees it had gone all the way low this was a very good opportunity many people must have missed it because either they were invested at a very high price and therefore didn't have any money to invest back into when the market fell in March, April, May and that was a very good time when many of these scripts were available at low price. 
but what happens is when the price goes down and and if you don't have your own study or you don't understand what this means or what is the fundamental of this company then you don't have the courage to buy into this companies so always do your research do your study thoroughly understand if you want to buy into this company and wait for opportunities like these to come and then buy into them so it has almost increased 100% more than 100% from uh, where it was in march april if we look at the current price earning it is quoting at around 21 times its earnings as of 20th november and the median pe or the average pe of last 3 years is around 20.3 times so this is very near to uh, in fact it has gone slightly above its average price earning of last 3 years of around 20.3 so we are still getting it at a reasonable average price but always buy when it goes below its price earning or average price earning of last 3 years so in again if we see here in march or rather may 2020 the price earning had dropped to almost 7.4 times we are getting it quite reasonable at around 7.4 times now it has increased to around 21 times so we are paying little expensive but still not that expensive considering that it is uh, coming to its average of the last 3 years next let us look at how the company's opm and npm compares with the sales figures on a quarterly basis in th th on 30th september 2020 company had shown a total sales of 2454 highest till date rather uh, revenue of a uh, quarter ending 30th september 2020 that was around 2454 crores of revenue generated on that the opm has always been very high sometimes even more than what it has been generating as revenue so we can ignore this uh, opm as i mentioned earlier and look at concentrate on the npm npm is 17% in 30th september 20% in june in uh, march the npm had fallen quite substantially to just 1.96% this is understandable because all the about the covid issue and uh, that could have affected the overall uh, revenue or npm of the company company has been growing its sales uh, at around 22% since last 10 years this is a positive growth rate whereas it is quoting at around 3.08 times its book value which we saw earlier was a little expensive 2.5 is quite reasonable but uh, we have to look at the long term price book and see where we can buy into this company it has a low interest coverage uh, all finance financial companies would have low interest coverage of uh, if it's above 1.2 it is considered good according to me at least so now we'll move on to the peer group analysis or peer group comparison the company is into finance and uh, finance and investment sector so we'll have to narrow it down and look at what we can compare cholamandalam investment and financial services with uh, which com which company so i would generally take the net worth or the market cap as the comparison criteria so we can compare cholamandalam which is around 9000 crores of net worth with either hdfc with either hdfc amc or sbi cards because they are very nearby to uh, around less than 10000 crores of net worth or we can compare mar using market cap also so if you have to compare using market cap chola can be compared with bajaj holdings and mutut finance so all of these three companies i would select mutut finance bajaj holdings and chola mandalam investment for this comparison because i'm taking market cap as the basis for that and not the net worth so beginning with how much is the price mutut finance is around 11183 crore oh sorry 1183 rupees per share bajaj holdings is going on at around 3008 rupees and chola investments at 338 rupees now the price difference could be because of split in shares or the face value 
Ned, it does not mean that Chola Mandalam investment because it is available at three thirty eight rupees. It's it's cheap. It's just that it its face value was uh, earlier we saw two rupee two rupee per share. The others could be at ten rupee or five rupee. I have not considered that face value data here, but as of now we can go on with this. Mutur is down fifteen percent from its fifty two week highest point. Bajaj holding twenty three percent down. So this is this has to recover quite a bit. And Chola is down just two point eight percent from where it was fifty two weeks back or its highest price point. Results for all three companies are up to date till September 2020, and for annual data, it's uh, up till up to date till March 2020. Sales on a quarterly basis, Mutut has seen 17.6 percent growth rate from 2397 to 2821 crores. Bajaj has seen a slight drop in its overall revenue generation from 117 to 116 crores. And Chola Mandalam has seen a 10% growth from 2,200 crores to 2,400 crores. So both Chola and Mutut have seen a positive growth rate in terms of revenue generation over September of 2019 quarter. In terms of net profit over its previous quarter, Chola has seen around 41% growth rate in its profits from 306 crores to 434 crores in September 2020, whereas. Bajaj has seen a fall, quite a substantial fall of 17% in its overall net profit from 1,028 to 872 crores, and Mutut has seen a 2.4 per 4-5% growth in its re revenues, rather profits. In terms of sales on an annual basis, Chola Mandalam has seen a growth of from 8,712 crores in 2020. Uh, to nine thousand and thirty-four crores in the recent twelve months. Bajaj Holding seems to be under little pressure. Sales from twenty twenty to TTM or twelve trailing months has dropped, and Mutut Finance has also seen a growth in its revenue from nine thousand six eighty-three to ten thousand six forty-four. Both of these Mutut and Chola Mandalam have managed to grow their revenues. Let us look at the profit of the 2020 with the recent 12 months. 1,053 crores to 1,297. That's a growth in Chola's uh, profits after tax. Bajaj has seen a marginal drop in its profits from 3,080 crores to 2,900, and Mutut Finance has seen a growth from 3,100 to 3,400 crores in its profits. We will ignore the cash flows from operations right now and move on and look at the price earning. So, on an average, last three years price earning for Chola Mandalam was 18.96 times. That is, price was quoting at around 18 times higher than the earnings. Whereas the recent price earning of 21 is above its three and five years average, so it's a little expensive. Either we can wait for It to come to its average, or we can look at its uh, peer group comparisons where they are quoting, and then consider where we want to buy based on price and earn price to earnings. Bajaj is quoting at around eleven, and Mutut Finance at around thirteen times its earnings. So all three companies' current price earning is above their averages of the last five and three years. We'll ignore the price to OCF for the finance companies. We'll look at price to book. We'll consider this. Mutut is quoting at around 3.5 times its net worth or book value, and Chola is also quoting at around 3.08 times. Bajaj Finance is quite cheap at around one times. It's it's almost at exactly at its net worth. That is, its market cap is nearby its net worth. So it's available at a decent price uh, or uh, good valuations, considering that other numbers should match up with it. We'll ignore the PEG for time being and look at the profits, how they have been growing over the last five and three years. Both Jola and Mutut have shown double-digit growth rate in their profits, as well as in their sales. Whereas, if you look at Bajaj Holding, it's showing a drop of almost 3.63 percent in its revenue generation from five years back, 
and 19% from three years back. So whatever revenue generated around three years back from there, it has seen a fall of almost 20% compounded over the last three years. As I mentioned, if you don't understand any of these uh, ratios, you can look at my other videos uh, which I published earlier. I'll put a link in the description as well as uh, you can go into the playlist and check it out from there. Moving on, ROE, return on equity for Mutut Finance is quite high at 29% and over the last 3 and 5 years also it has always generated about 25% of ROE. Whereas Chula has generated around 15% in last 5 and 3 years but in the recent uh, 2020 it has fallen below its 15% benchmark or average. Bajaj Holding is working with a lower ROE of around 11% but it's nearby its averages. Return on capital employed is now Bajaj Holding also has different businesses so uh, Bajaj Auto, Bajaj Financial Services, Bajaj FinServe, service, FinServe and these th three are uh, so basically Bajaj Holding has a different kind of model as well as because uh, automobile is also considered automobile loans and it has it's a holding company so it doesn't do any business but it helps like it is holding shares of its group companies or its subsidiaries so this thing also we have to keep in mind next thing is we'll go on return on capital employed 10 percent 11 percent in last five years and 10.72 percent in last three years and Mutut has always generated above 15% of return on capital employed. So Mutut seems a little better, efficient in terms of generating profitability for the shareholders and total capital employed. So the more efficient a company is, the better it is. Bajaj Holding has generated around 12% of return on capital employed. So whatever capital is employed into the business on that every year, on average it's generating around 12% in last 3 years and 9% in last 5 years. So the cost of the return on capital or return on total capital employed should be more than the cost of the capital. Return on total assets measures how much revenue it generated based on the asset it has. So the more it can generate the better it is considered. So on less assets if it is generating higher profits that's always considered good. So Bajaj Holding has the least amount of assets and highest amount of profit based on that assets. Whereas Chula's assets are very high and therefore their return percentage is low, which is 1.76% on their total assets. So more efficiency is considered when on the total assets you can generate higher and higher returns. Asset turnover, we'll ignore this for timing. Uh, we'll move on to profit after tax of the last five years. So in total, Mutut has generated around 9,134 crores, Bajaj holding 13,521 crores of profits and uh, Chola investment has generated around 4,461 crores. We'll ignore the cash flows and free cash flow of the last five years. Market cap of Mutut stands at around 47,000 crores, Bajaj holding at 33,000 crores and Chola Mandalam at 27,782 crores. Net worth wise, Chola Mandalam is 9,000 crore company but it has been quoting in the market at around 27,000 crores so which is around 3.08 times earlier we saw. Bajaj holding 31,658 crores of net worth and 33,000 crores of market cap. So it's almost like slightly above one times its net worth. Mutut Finance is quoting very high. 13,000 is the net worth whereas the market cap is quite high at 47,000 crores. So both are quoting at around more than three times. Contingent liability for all three companies is very low, very nominal. So that's okay. Debt to equity is zero for Bajaj Holding because it's a holding company as well as mentioned earlier. Mutut Finance is 3.43 times 
it's uh, that is reasonable it's not that high we have to also look at other group companies where the other group companies debt to equity is chola is has taken up a lot of debt so it's 6.72 times its equity which is quite high but yet it is maintaining its coverage of 1.38 which is above 1.2 of which is my benchmark but when we look at the other peer group companies where their coverage is so chola's coverage is quite low compared to its peer group companies promoter holding in all three companies is quite substantial at around 50% and above no none of these companies have pledged any of their shares which is good the debt to sales percentage uh, debtors to sales percentage rather is very low and anyways uh, these companies don't have debtors that much debtors so we can ignore this net profit margin 32% for mutut finance in 2020 and 12% for chola this 707% will have to check for bajaj holdings if somebody is interested separately dividend yield generally what happens for bajaj is as they don't have uh, any revenue generation most of it is through other income so therefore it would have a very high npm margin but if you if you are interested you can analyze this company separately dividend yield is around less than 1.5% for all of these three companies so that this completes my detailed analysis of chola mandalam investment with bajaj holdings and mutut finance if you liked this video do share it and with your friends and subscribe thank you for watching this video